Hey Crypt Keepers, thank you for tuning into Amy's Crypt. I am so, so excited for today's episode because we are going to be talking all about Port Arthur, which is commonly cited as being the most haunted place in all of Australia. So to dive into the ghosts of Port Arthur, we're first gonna to wanna to look at the history, what shaped this place. And Port Arthur is actually a very, very important historical site, not only within Tasmania, but in the whole of Australia. Now it really played a fundamental part in building modern day Tassie, modern day Tasmania, but it also incurred a very, very dark history in the process. And it is this dark history, which many people believe caused Port Arthur to be so, so haunted. So let's rewind back towards the end of the 1700s. At this time, Britain wasn't really able to keep sending their convicts over to the Americas. So the next best destination was of course, Australia. And a lot of convicts, a lot of people were sent to Aussie shores, especially to Tasmania and in particular, Port Arthur. And these people did it extremely tough. They had very harsh lifestyle and barely any of them ever returned back home to Britain. And when you think about this too, it seems like a really unfair punishment to a lot of these people. I mean, a lot of people had committed pretty serious hard crimes, but vast majority of the convicts that were sent down to Australia were sent for very, very petty crimes such as theft. They could have stolen, you know, a sheep or a loaf of bread. And a lot of the time times that theft was just in the means of survival for not only them but also their family and then you know they were taken away from their whole life everything that they knew and shipped off to a different country and i should also mention that it wasn't only adults that were taken away as convicts and sent to to australia it was also children while i was at port arthur i did read a story about a nine-year-old boy who was caught a thieving he actually stole a toy not even for himself, he was stealing it because an adult had instructed him to do it. Probably because this adult knew the harsh penalties for stealing. And this boy got caught and shipped off to Australia away from his whole family and his lifestyle. And he was put to work down in Port Arthur. In fact, they even had prison systems down there specifically to deal with children. Anyway, by the time the 1830 had rolled around, Port Arthur was established as a penal settlement with its main purpose being a timber station. Now as the need for this industry grew, so did Port Arthur. More and more convicts were sent there, the population grew, the industry in turn also grew. So there came need for more buildings and you know the prisons were built down there and because the industry was thriving so much the prisons could work with industrial purpose. So a lot of the convicts were there to work. It was a working prison and they did this work in very very harsh conditions doing industries such as logging, shipbuilding and even coal mining which they say was the worst of all and I do have an episode coming up soon focusing just on the Port Arthur coal mines. So as I said industry was booming, population was growing and more and more buildings were popping up around Port Arthur and during this time there was a lot of really really dark events that did transpire. People were there enduring torture because they would be punished a lot. They were living in extremely poor conditions and doing very very hard labour. They were working on extremely difficult tasks. And this occurred right through until the downfall of Port Arthur. As the industry started to dwindle, so did the prisons and the purpose of this place. And by 1877, the place had come to a standstill. And that was when the last convict was shipped off away from Port Arthur. Since the end of this chapter in Port Arthur's lifetime, it has been preserved. It is a historic site and runs as a tourist attraction and a museum now in Tasmania, really focusing on showing this place's historical past. This unfortunately and very, very sadly, wasn't the end of the dark events to occur at Port Arthur like it may seem that it should be. In 1996, one of the darkest moments in more recent Australian history unfolded when there was a mass shooting at Port Arthur. This sadly took the lives of 35 people and saw many more injured. It did, however, bring about some pretty important changes in Australian gun laws. And today there is a really nice tribute set out at Port Arthur that is a place of almost quiet reflection and definitely somewhere sobering that you should visit while you, you are at Port Arthur. So now that we can understand and reflect on the past of Port Arthur a bit better, you can really get the sense of how dreary a place this must have been for the thousands of people who passed through 
through there, especially all of the convicts who had to spend time there. You can just tell how hard life must have been here, not just to exist there, but also the working conditions since it was an industrial prison. And even more horrible than knowing about those working conditions is knowing that Port Arthur was actually a death sentence for a lot of people. There were many, many people who did suffer and then die in this area. And of course, this is thought to have led to a lot of the hauntings and just one reason why so many people will always cite Port Arthur as being one of the most haunted places in Tasmania, if not one of the most haunted places in Australia. And a lot of people just say flat out, it is the most haunted place. Now, of course, many paranormal occurrences have been reported at Port Arthur and this activity isn't centered in just one spot it is spread over the entire site which I can tell you is massive people have claimed to hear disembodied voices and other noises that they can't really explain they've seen heard and even smelt things that are just unexplainable and they just do not know where they've come from others have also claimed to encounter poltergeist activity and there are also some people who have claimed to be attacked physically attacked by the unseen. Now, as I mentioned, Port Arthur is really, really big and there's not just one spot that is haunted, there is many. But there are, of course, a couple of places where activity happens a lot and they are said to be more active. So I'm gonna cover some of those areas for you as well as a few general hauntings. One of these haunted hotspots is the asylum and this place was built in the 1860s. And it's a very, very interesting place because unlike a lot of the asylums in the world, going on at that time this place seemed like it was really really ahead of the times in a way part of what they strived to do there was focus on having a soothing and calming environment for the people held in the asylum a lot of their work duties were kind of cut back and there was a real focus on giving them activities that could stimulate them mentally and probably their main task was to do the gardening on the grounds so it is kind of interesting to think of the asylum being haunted in comparison to all the other asylums where very very terrible things happened back in the day could it be haunted just because it holds the name of asylum and just the word asylum seems synonymous with having to be haunted. Nevertheless, this asylum is said to contain spirits. We have an elderly lady and a little girl who are very commonly sighted in there and I really think that those hauntings are quite interesting because not only has this building functioned as an asylum during its life, it has also functioned as a schoolhouse. So I do wonder and think, hmm, could this little girl be related to a different time in the asylum's past? It's really unclear as to where these hauntings come from. Other activities has also been reported in here. Disembodied footsteps is a very, very common one. And there has also been people that have walked into rooms to see the light fixtures just swinging around on the ceiling when there's absolutely no movement in that building. Another one of the very active buildings here is known as the separate prison. And just looking at this place, it really does look intimidating. And it was built to look like this on purpose because the builders wanted to, it to really instill mystery and fear within the convict population to sort of deter bad behavior. Because if you are bad, you were sent to the separate prison. Now the separate prison was really strong on using the solitary system, which was gaining popularity throughout the world at the time. A lot of other prisons you'll find, such as Eastern State Penitentiary in the US, were using this same method where they would isolate prisoners and keep them in complete silence, no social interaction whatsoever. And unfortunately, this actually did a lot more to harm the mental health rather than rehabilitate and improve the mental health of many of the people that were kept there. Now, when you get stuck into talking about hauntings at Port Arthur, the separate prison is commonly said to be, you know, the most haunted building or one of the most. And that is because there's something really negative in there. And it kind of makes sense because a lot of the people, who, the convicts kept in this prison were kept in really, really poor conditions. Their mental health really, really deteriorated. It kind of makes sense that the spirits left behind could be a bit nasty. So here people commonly claim to be touched a lot by something unseen and it's not just touching, there's also scratching. So it can be quite violent and aggressive and lead to attacks in here. And the more and more you think about it, the mental pain and anguish that these people endured, thinking about them lashing out at you know people visiting and maybe coming through, being very, very loud in a place that 
was typically kept very, very quiet purposefully. It kind of fits in with the history and the haunting, if that makes sense. Another place that is really, really interesting for its dark and spooky history is the old church. And I gotta tell you guys, this is probably my favorite building in, in all of Port Arthur. And I probably will be posting some photos of the old church over my Instagram. So if you guys don't follow me, go look me up at Amy's Crypt. I would love to hang out with you guys over there on Instagram. But this church really did did have a dark start to its existence that involved murder. So throwing it back to 1835, there was a number of convicts who were working on building the foundations of this church, which I should mention is completely convict built. One of the men, William Wiley, is said to have just suddenly turned on another one of the men, who was Joseph Shuttleworth, and brutally murdered him. William is said to have struck his victim three times in the head with a pickaxe before exclaiming, I am satisfied. And I just think that that is really a chilling thing to say and just so creepy like imagine witnessing this and seeing a man brutally kill another man and then saying I am satisfied like what what's even heavier here is this guy who was murdered did nothing to provoke or or bring this upon himself no one's really really sure to this day why w William killed him but there is a lot of dark history that followed William up until this murder he was shipped out to Port Arthur when he was just 14 and it's said that he was a drunk and alcoholic by the time he was 16 and then he committed this murder when he was in his late 20s and then after this he was hanged for murdering someone so it's just you can just get a real good sense of how dark a time it must have been back then. So this is pretty dark and it makes total sense when people report strange paranormal occurrences happening around the church which kind of seems like an unsuspecting place for a haunting. But I'll tell you what there are a lot of other hauntings and ghost stories that cover the entirety of Port Arthur. There's a lot of other spirits said to linger in this place. One of these spirits that has been cited a whole lot is that of a blue lady. And no one really knows a whole lot about this woman, but she was believed to have lived in Port Arthur back in the 1800s and was probably the wife of one of the leaders of the people in charge there. Now it's said that during childbirth, she actually lost a baby. And that's one of the reasons why she has remained at Port Arthur because she's in service of her lost child and you hear about these types of hauntings a lot where it's a woman searching for her her lost baby and it's just it's always such a sad thing to think about. Now in addition to this blue lady we also have a lot of children a lot of kids are said to haunt Port Arthur and people have seen groups of children all around the grounds usually playing before suddenly disappearing into thin air and some of the guests have even claimed to have these kids run right through them right through their body and I think that that is really really interesting that there are kids there but also again telling of how dark the times were because life expectancy back then were not very long guys and all this I haven't even mentioned the ghostly priest the disembodied faces so the bodiless faces that have been seen there and the shadow figures a lot of people have seen black figures all around Port Arthur which is very very creepy now for me personally visiting Port Arthur was a really really big deal this place has been on my bucket list for so long and I think that anyone who goes to Tasmania any Aussies should definitely go and check it out there's a lot of history there it's a very interesting place and it's preserved and presented really really well to the public for this reason I also really really wanted to make a video on it for you guys I really really wanted it on Amy's Crypt my channel as well as my website amyscrypt.com so I'm happy that I'm making this video but at the same time I know that I'm gonna let some people down because I didn't do a nighttime paranormal investigation there I do have a video coming up my next two videos are a investigative series that I filmed at Port Arthur inside one particular haunted house and they are amazing I might drop a little sneak peek trailer for you guys right here I have just heard some noises coming from the house and it looks like there might be a bit of light inside I think I'm seeing things already, which is always cool in like an old haunted house. I just looked over and I could see the outline of two figures. Now I'm going to say this is maybe the room that gives me the weirdest vibes. Now I know that Alice lives here and I've heard there's also a little boy who lives here. That's extremely odd. What was that? I don't know. Did you hear that? Yeah, something. Yeah, something hissed.
So make sure that you're subscribed, have your notification bell on because my next two videos coming up are going to be investigating that haunted house and things got really, really creepy in there. I, I'm not going to lie, that place scared me a bit. But I know that there's going to be some people who are a bit down about me not investigating, you know, the prison, the church, all of these other structures. And the fact of the matter, guys, is I tried. It was just a little bit out of my Amy's Crypt budget. It was way too expensive to get nighttime access to this place. And a lot of people probably don't know this but a lot of the places that I investigate you need to pay rental fees or filming fees to actually go and film there and I'll tell you what Port Arthur is very very expensive now if you guys would like to help me out with my investigations which at times do cost a lot of money I do have a patron and YouTube membership set up and I'm going to link them below for you guys to check out there's not only a way to help me do what I do and continue what I do but it also gives you guys a lot of bonus content behind the scenes stuff and you get to see what I'm up to. I share a lot with my patrons and my YouTube members, a lot of stuff that you just don't see on Amy's Crypt. So I'm having a lot of fun with it and I hope that all my patrons and YouTube members are having fun with it too. But yeah, that's a way that you can support me, but just by being here, watching my videos, liking, commenting, sharing, all that stuff really helps me out anyway. So I really love and appreciate you guys for that. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video of Port Arthur and are looking forward to the investigation. Just know that I couldn't get into the actual Port Arthur site to do a nighttime investigation. But hopefully this video has been insightful, educational, spooky, so again please get excited for my next two videos because they're going to be big investigations make sure you're subscribed make sure you have your notification bell turned on as well because I know that YouTube can be funny with sending out notifications so if you're really really keen for those investigations make sure you got that bell pressed but if you guys did enjoy this video I really really hope that you did please remember to like comment share and subscribe because as I said that really really does help me out if you want to do any more reading on Port Arthur or any of the other haunted locations I've ever visited head to my website amyscrypt.com you guys again you can also support me further and get behind the scenes bonus content on my patreon and YouTube members I'm linking them below you guys can follow me at Amy's Crypt on Facebook Twitter and Instagram as well again that's another way of helping me that really does help me out more than you know but thank you so much Crypt Keepers until next time